The people at Kaiweets reached out to me and asked if I would promote one of their most popular uh, multimeters uh, in time for their Black Friday sale. And I said yes, but you have to send some extra units along for me to give away to my viewers. So I'll have the details of the giveaway at the end of the video. I really don't know anything about it. it just arrived and they want me to check it out. And I'm going to, uh, I get to put the batteries in. I'm going to uh, use this to diagnose and troubleshoot a uh, Royal B battery pack, which I'll get to that in a minute. First, I just want to get my hands on this thing. First impression is it's bigger than I was expecting. I noticed the trend with these uh, multimeters is to make them smaller and smaller, but uh, this one actually is a nice size. It's not too small. Okay, so that's where the battery goes. It's really just a tiny bit smaller than what I'm used to for my traditional. And they gave us an extra set of batteries. So I won't complain about that. Oh, it even has the brass insert for the screw. That's a nice touch. There's the flashlight. Doesn't have a screw keeper though. Doesn't have that little locking washer doodad to keep the screw from getting lost, but that's okay. So that, ooh, it already turned on. Oh, is this like a demo mode? Must be running some kind of a demo mode. Or auto, never mind, that was an auto mode. I think there's a screen protector on here. I'll have to see if I can peel that off. Anyways, let me turn that off for now. And get it in the case. Feels all right. Okay, so on the screen what you're seeing is some flickering but with my eyes in real life there's no flicker I think it's just a timing issue with the camera uh, so in person the screen looks good has good contrast it's color I can see it from different angles um, so that that's uh, that's usable that is uh, I think it's backlit too yeah it is let me turn off some lights let me just see what this looks like once yeah it is backlit all right, that probably looks a little bit more like what it looks like to me, uh, you know, not counting the flicker from the uh, the camera and lights and whatnot. So the screen is good. I, I do like that. Anyways, I'm just going to fumble my way through this while I kind of get used to it and figure it out. So ohms, continuity, diode, capacitor, millivolts, frequency, temperature. Oh, it has the... Uh, uh, the the N NCV where you get it next to an AC uh, socket or live wire or whatever and it it's a no contact uh, I don't know how it's the no contact sensory doodad that beeps when there's live AC so you don't have to physically connect it uh, to the wires to see if a circuit is live I know I did a really bad job describing that and then here we have current milliamps and lamps uh, and amps and lamps so it's got oh it even shows you uh, you see that it, it to uh, move the uh, the leads over to the 10 app, it actually flashes the symbols. It's actually kind of cool. Let me do that one more time because a lot of times you forget to switch the leads over when you go up to uh, milliamp to 10 amp. Yeah, look at that. It shows you which uh, jacks to use. These are just your standard four millimeter banana plugs down here. Um, speaking of leads, okay, so that part pretty self-explanatory on that and there's a flashlight too I might as well just go ahead and turn that on yeah flashlight works it's kind of nice to have um, leads Let's look at these leads that it comes with Ooh, there's the temperature yeah temperature sensor that's good and the leads 
Let me just get these out of the package so I can get a good feel on them. Mm, I think this is the, uh, this isn't silicone, this is the, what, PVC wires, 20 gauge it says. Um, not super soft, but, and let's get these caps off here. Uh, just your uh, run-of-the-mill meter leads are not gold-plated or anything. These are your standard tips. I myself prefer the ultra-fine tip. This is what I, my daily use meter leads has the nice uh, pointy fine tips for doing surface mount smaller stuff. These are fine for just basic whatevers, but uh, I myself would probably uh, spend the extra few bucks for an upgraded set of leads. Oh, and the case. Well, case is worth keeping. That would be nice to uh, throw it in and shove it in a drawer. It's kind of a hard case to it. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, get familiar with this thing and uh, actually use it to do something. So I was wondering, what is this APO button? I wasn't quite sure what APO stood for, but as uh, looking through the manual, it's auto power off, which is kind of nice. It has a dedicated button for the auto power, power off because uh, on my Unity, um, it has an auto power off, which is kind of annoying. It usually turns off in a little too fast, like in a couple of minutes or something like that. I don't know. There is a way to disable the auto power off on this meter. You have to like hold down, I think, select when you turn it on and it disables the auto power off. But it's a little bit more cumbersome because usually with that meter, by the time you remember you want to turn off the auto power off, you've already turned it on and it's too late to disable the auto power off. But on this, it just has a dedicated button to turn off the uh, auto power off. So there a little power symbol comes up when you press it. Anyways, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, all right, so let's get started with figuring this thing out. Um, so here we have a Roy B battery. This is the, what, the 40 volt? What do they call this? Yeah, the 40 um, for their higher power tools. I am a big fan of Royo B because I, I feel they're the most ethical when it comes to batteries. Now, I'm not counting this style of battery, but they're older 18 volt plus batteries. I like that it doesn't matter how old or new the tool or the battery is, it just works. It's not like other brands that are constantly changing their batteries every model change. So uh, it gets complicated with other power tools to find a replacement battery, but not with Royo B because you know, It'll just work, so I like that. Anyways, enough rambling. So uh, just a little secret between me and you, I may have uh, recycled this from the recycling bin. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I'm gonna give this thing, hopefully give this thing another life uh, without it having to be fully processed to be recycled. I'm hoping I can just repair it. Um, just noticing the pins are fine. So here's the story. It, you push the button and it showed a half charge. It pulled this thing right out of the recycling bin and it was half charged. So brought it home, put it on my charger, and my charger was giving me an error message. So there is definitely something wrong with this. Uh, maybe it sat outside and got wet and the board has some uh, liquid damage. I've seen that before. Maybe it has a bad cell. Maybe the balance board is acting up. Um, I'm going to use uh, the new meter today to find out what's going on. This will be my first time getting inside of one of these uh, 40 volt batteries, so I'm going to have to fumble my way through it. I'll leave this in auto range for now. It uh, does have auto and manual ranging. Um, or not, not range. Well, it has auto manual ranging, but it also has auto manual function. Um, so we'll just leave it in default for now. I'm gonna just check to see where this battery is at. It is labeled on these terminals, negative and positive. It looks like the center leads are for temperature. Um, we're at 19, 18 volts. Um, okay, so that gives us a starting uh, condition anyways. Still at half capacity, it says. Let me see what I gotta do to get into this thing. I 
see this label up here is joining these two halves together. So maybe I can hinge it up if I can crack this open. I don't feel any other screws hidden under that label. It might just be a matter of forcing this thing open. Okay. I think I can sneak the button board out of here. Yep, that's the battery indicator. Um, and now, how do I get the cells out? I do feel some bumps under the sticker. So, uh, see, I could either just poke through that or uh, peel that sticker off. Or if I can just peel that off. Bear with me while I dig for some tools. Making sure I'm not setting it down on anything that conducts. Uh, maybe I can just peel this off of there. Yeah, come on. Is there? Yep, there are screws hidden under there. All right. Um, smaller than what I already have out. That happens to be the right size, kind of. There. Nice. Okay. So I gotta see how these cells are organized. I see a break down the middle of board. All right, so I'm just gonna take a step back and check the condition of each of the cells. This is a 10S battery. So there's 10 series cells and they are uh, have test points labeled here. At least it's marked where each cell is so I can go through each set and make sure it's at the proper voltage. Let me just get a good ground here. Um, I'll just go right to the 10th cell to start with. So there's our 36.7 volts, which is uh, a good sign that the cells are probably doing what they're supposed to do. But let me see if I can find uh, test point nine. There's eight, five, there's nine right here. Okay, so from ground to nine is 32.6. And again, from ground to 10 is 36. So, so far we're at a four volt difference, that's good. Test point eight, should be about four volts difference from nine. Um, where's eight? There it is, eight right here. Okay, uh, yes, yeah, cell eight is 28.5. Good so far, and here's seven, 24.4. And is this, that's six negative, I need six positive. Six positive is over here, 20.4. And test point five. Uh, where's five? There's five plus right here. 16.3. Here's four. 12.2. Test point three positive right here. 8.1. Uh, test point two right here. Four, and then test point one is the ground, so that would be zero. I tried it all out, and we do have a four volt difference between uh, each each set of uh, cell test points. So that's good. That means the battery pack is not the problem. The cells are healthy. They're at where they're supposed to be. So somewhere on this balance board, we have a problem. Um, so I got to focus my attention uh, closer to the board, not the cells. 
Okay, I'm gonna look back at the switching MOSFET. This is what's responsible for cutting power. Uh, if the voltage drops too low or if it has a high temperature problem, it can shut things down, or if there's a imbalance of the cells, it will shut things down. So here is the main positive rail. Here's a positive test point, but this is the main positive for the pack, and this MOSFET switch is negative. So this is the negative coming out, but the negative going into the MOSFET is right here. It's actually the zero, or I'm sorry, the one test point is ground. So again, from the main positive to the main negative, it's 36.7 volts, which is good. That's what it's supposed to be. No problem there across this fuse or maybe current shunt, whatever they're doing with this piece of metal, still 36.7 and right at the switching MOSFET, 36.7. Let's check coming out of the MOSFET. There's our our 14. So we are losing power. Come on, get a good reading there. Uh, I'm breaking through. I think I think this board might be coated with uh, control mode coating, so I kind of have to break through the uh, coating. 14.6, which is what we were getting. Yeah, right at the main output terminals. So our voltage drop is across the MOSFET. Here I have removed the switching MOSFET. Um, and disclaimer before I go too far, messing around with lithium batteries is quite dangerous, so do all this at your own risk. Um, these guys, when shorted, can get angry enough to uh, shoot flames. So um, only do this if you know what you're doing. Otherwise, don't do this at home. So anyways, got the MOSFET pulled, and I see something strange here, but when I go back to the main terminals, I'm still getting the weird uh, half voltages, even with the MOSFET open and removed. But anyways, what this is telling me is that this whole time the MOSFET was never even being turned on. It was open, which leads me back to something in the brains of this unit thinks there is a problem when there isn't a problem. The temperature sensor looks okay. It, maybe thinks the cells are unbalanced but they're not we checked them they're good um i guess i could just run a jumper across uh, where the mosfet closes but uh, then i would lose my low voltage cutoff and any over temperature protection so that would be a little too risky to do um, so i think at this point in time i'm just going to put this off to the side i'll save it for the cells if i get another good board I can swap out the board let's switch over to diode mode and just check out the MOSFET so it is turned on I like the diode mode on this meter it's quick but it gives a little beep when it senses a continuity or a correct voltage drop across the the diode. So there it's open and there's a 0.5 so that's a good expected voltage drop. It's nothing uh, unusually concerning checking out this MOSFET. Here I have on continuity and it is fairly quick. There's a slight delay for continuity. And I did switch out to my uh, my leads that I purchased separately. If we go back to the original leads that they ship it with, which, oh, if I put it in the right slot, doesn't quite pick up the continuity beep as quick. These are the got the kind of a you know, not the greatest coating on the leads. Now the meter is fine. The The meter itself kind of has everything you'd expect a good meter to have. Um, I guess I have nothing bad to say about it. The display looks good. Um, now for the giveaway details. So, 48 hours after this video goes live, I'm going to randomly pick two comments. Um, so make sure your uh, notifications are turned on so when I send you a reply in the comments you actually get it because if you miss it I'm only going to give you a day to to respond back to me otherwise I go to the next person in line. Um, 
So you must be within the lower 48 states. Uh, the shipping is on out of my own pocket. So sorry if you're on a different part of the world. You just have to buy one of these yourself because I'm pretty sure these guys will ship anywhere. Um, I will have links and information in the description and in the top comment. Um, by the time this video goes live, I'm going to try to have a 10% off uh, link working so you can buy this 10% off their listed price which even even their full price is only like $45.99 which is pretty much exactly what I paid for my old Unity so even at full price they're actually not bad um, and there's gonna be some Black Friday special going on they I don't know exactly what they're gonna do for that but again look down in the description look at the top comments I'll have links and information so that's going to wrap up today's video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. What do you think, Cat? Not too bad of a meter, huh? <laughs>